concept about grouping of uh, middle cells and the factors. Now, as we know that these kind of groups have been series or patterns. Similar to factors can also have series connection and pattern connection. Now, it is to be noted that if in an electrical circuit we have two resistors in series or two capacitors in series, then they will have same amount of current and charge. Whereas if they are in parallel, the potential across them will be same. So in series we have if it is resistance, then same current, if it is capacitor, same charge. In parallel connection we will have same potential. Now In case of, uh, say, we have two resistors, R1 and R2, and across them, the net potential is V. So, V is the potential that is applied across this combination. Now, I is the current which will flow through both the resistors. Now, let's say across this, the potential drop is V1. Across this, the potential drop is P2. Then the resistors are they are different. Current flowing through them is the same, so they will have different potential drop. But the net potential drop will be V. So V will be equal to V1 plus V2. So this is what we want to call Now, since from Ohm's law we have V is equal to R. So since current going to both the resistors are same, so that means this quantity, if this is constant, now if this is constant, then that means potential drop will be proportional to current since potential drop across this will be proportional to the resistance, potential drop across the second resistor will be pro proportional to the resistance across R2. So that means V1, if we is the total potential drop. V1 will be equal to V times R1 divided by R1 plus R2. V1 is proportional to R1. Similarly, V2 is equal to V R2 divided by R1 plus R2. Now, see, if we add these two quantities, we should get this. Uh, V is V1 plus V2, so that is V R1, R1 plus R2 plus R2, R1 plus R2, so this is V. So from this you can calculate the potential drop across each resistor. Now similarly, suppose we have two capacitors in so this is capacitor C1, this is capacitor C2. Now suppose now the potential is V. So let's say across this the potential drop is C1, across this the potential drop is V2. So now V is equal to V1 plus V2. Now since the capacitor is C, the same amount of charge you go to this. Now for capacitors we have Q is equal to C. Now in this case, this is constant. So that means potential drop across a capacitor will be inversely proportional to the capacitor. Potential drop across this will be inversely proportional to the capacitor. So in this case, we will have V1, it is inversely proportional to the capacitor. So V1 will be 
V C2 divided by C1 plus C2 and V2. This will be equal to V C1 divided by C1 plus C2. So now in this case, again if we add, we will get V1 plus V2 equal to V. Now this is the case in series. Now in parallel, suppose we have two resistors, R1 and R2, they are connected in parallel. So now if V is the high potential, V is the high potential, so potential is not E to V. Same. So that means if I current is coming to this, so I1 will go to R1 and I2 will go to R2. So that means from first of first law, I will be equal to I1 plus I2. Now again, if I use fourth law, we have V is equal to I. Now in this case, this V is constant. So V is constant, that means the current going to a resistor will be equally proportional to resistance. So that means I can write I1 that is equal to I R2 divided by R1 plus R2. This is I1, this is R2. Similarly, I2 will be equal to I R1 divided by R1 plus R2. So this is how the current gets divided across the two resistors. So now what we have seen that in the case of parallel combination of two resistors, there is a division of current. In case of series combination of two resistors, we have a division of potential. V1 divided into V1 and V2. So let's see what happens in case of parallel grouping of capacitors. Now let's say this is one capacitor and this is another capacitor. We are connecting parallel. So this is C1 and this is C2. Now let's say we use the applied potential. So let's say few charges coming. So through this Q1 charge will go through this Q2 charge. Now again by first of first two I can write Q equal to Q1 plus Q2. Now for capacitor we have Q is equal to C. Now in this case this is constant. V is constant across both the capacitors. So that means Q will be proportional to C. So I can write Q1 is equal to Q. C1 divided by C1 plus C2 and Q2 is equal to Q C2 divided by C1 plus C2. Now here again you can see that Q1 plus Q2, if you add Q quantity, you get Q. 